Yella and welcome to Pagan Tea Break. I'm Galoywin and in this episode I'm going to begin a reading of the Harvamal. Now ever since I was a child I grew up with the legends of the, the Norse, the Anglo-Saxons. Obviously living in Britain it's a huge part of my heritage and my culture here. So I want to start reading this poem. It's one of my favourite poems from the Poetic Edda which is a collection of poems and I may be reading other poems from the Poetic Edda as we go through on this podcast, but I'll leave it up to you and to what you want to listen to. But to start off with, let's begin with the harmony. Within the gates ere a man shall go, full long let him look about him, for little he knows where a foe may lurk and sit in the seats within. Hail to the giver, a guest has come, where shall the stranger sit? Swift shall he be, who with sword shall try the proof of his might to make. Fire he needs, who with frozen knees has come from the cold without. Food and clothes must a fairer have, the man from the mountains come. Water and towels and welcoming speech should he find who comes to the feast. If renown he would get and again be greeted, wisely and well must he act. Wits must he have who wanders wide, but all is easy at home. At the witless man the wise shall wink, when among such men he sits. A man shall not boast of his keenness of mind, but keep it close in his breast. To the silent and wise does ill come seldom, when he goes as guest to a house. The knowing guest who goes to the feast in silent attention sits. With his ears he hears, with his eyes he watches. Thus wary are wise men all. Happy the one who wins for himself, favour and praises fair. Less safe by far is the wisdom found that is hid in another's heart. Happy the man who has while he lives wisdom and praise as well, for evil counsel a man full oft has from another's heart. A better burden may no man bear for wanderings wide than wisdom. It is better than wealth on unknown ways, and in grief a refuge it gives. A better burden may no man bear for wanderings wide than wisdom. Worse food for the journey, he brings not a field than an over-drinking of ale. Less good there lies than most believe in ale for mortal men, for the more he drinks, the less does man of his mind the mastery hold. Over beer the bird of forgetfulness broods, and steals the minds of men, with the heron feathers fettered I lay, and in Gunloth's house was held. Drunk I was, I was dead drunk, when the fiala wise I was. Tis the best of drinking if back one brings his wisdom with him home. The son of a king shall be silent and wise, and bold in battle as well. Bravely and gladly a man shall go, till the day of his death is come. The sluggard believes he shall live for ever, if the fight he faces not. But age shall not grant him the gift of peace, though spears may spare his life. The fool is agape when he comes to the feast, he stammers or else is still, but soon if he gets a drink it is seen, what the mind of the man is like. He alone is aware, who has wandered wide, and fair abroad has fared, how great a mind is guided by him that wealth of wisdom has. Shun not the mead, but drink in measure, speak to the point, or be still. For rudeness none shall rightly blame thee, if soon thy bed thou seekest. The greedy man, if his mind be vague, will eat till sick he is. The vulgar man, when among the wise, to scorn by his belly is bought. The herds know well when home they shall fare, and then from the grass they go. But the foolish man, his belly's measure, shall never know aright. A paltry man and poor of mind at all things ever mocks, for never he knows what he ought to know, that he is not free from faults. The witless man is awake all night, thinking of many things, careworn he is when the morning comes, and his woe is just as it was. The foolish man for friends all those who laugh at him will hold, when among the wise he marks it not, though hatred of him they speak. The foolish man for friends, all those who laugh at him will hold, but the truth when he comes to the counsel he learns, that few in his favour will speak. 
An ignorant man thinks that all he knows when he sits by himself in a corner, but never what answer to make he knows when others with questions come. A witless man, when he meets with men, had best in silence abide, for no one shall find that nothing he knows if his mouth is not open too much. Why shall he seem who well can question and also answer well? Nought is concealed that men may say among the sons of men. Often he speaks who never is still with words that win no faith. The babbling tongue, if a bridle, if find not, oft for itself sings ill. In mockery no one a man shall hold, although he fare to the feast. Why seems one oft, if naught he is asked, and safely he sits dry-skinned? Wise a guest holds it to take to his heels when mock of another he makes. But little he knows who laughs at the feast, though he mocks in the midst of his foes. Friendly of mind are many men, till feasting they mock at their friends. To mankind a bane must it ever be when guests together strive. Oft should one make an early meal, nor fasting come to the feast, else he sits and chews as if he would choke, and little is able to ask. Crooked and fair is the road to a foe, though his house on the highway be, but wide and straight is the way to a friend, though far away he fare. Forth shall one go, nor stay as a guest in a single spot forever. Love becomes loathing if long one sits by the hearth in another's home. Better a house, though a hut it be, a man is master at home. A pair of goats and a patched-up roof are better far than begging. Better a house, though a hut it be, a man is master at home. His heart is bleeding who needs must beg when food he fain would have. Away from his arms in an open field, a man should fare not a foot, for never he knows where the need for a spear shall arise on the distant road. If wealth of man has won for himself, let him never suffer in need. Oft he saves for a foe what he plans for a friend, for much goes worse than he wish. None so free with gifts or food have I found that gladly he took not a gift nor one who so widely scattered his wealth, that of recompense, hatred he had. Friends shall gladden each other with arms and garments, as each for himself can see. Gift-givers' friendships are longest found, if fair their fates may be. To his friend a man a friend shall prove, to him and the friend of his friend. But never a man shall friendship make with one of his foeman's friends. If a friend thou hast, whom thou fully wilt trust, and good from him wouldst get, thy thoughts with his mingle and gifts shall thou make, and fare to find him oft. If another thou hast, whom thou hardly wilt trust, yet good from him wouldst get, thou shalt speak him fair, but falsely think, and fraud with falsehood requite. So is it with him whom thou hardly wilt trust, and whose mind thou mayst not know, Laugh with him mayst thou, but speak not thy mind, like gifts to his shalt thou give. Young was I once, and wandered alone, and naught of the road I knew. Rich did I feel when a comrade I found, for man is man's delight. The lives of the brave and noble are best, sorrows they seldom feed, but the coward fear of all things feels, and not gladly the miser gives. My garments once in a field I gave to a pair of carven poles. Heroes they seemed when clothes they had, but the naked man is naught. On the hillside drear the fir tree dies, all bootless its needles and bark. It is like a man whom no one loves. Why should his life be long? Hotter than fire between false friends does friendship five days burn. When the sixth day come, the fire cools, and ended is all the love. No great thing needs a man to give, oft little will purchase praise. With half a loaf and half-filled cup, a friend full fast I made. A little sand has a little sea, and small are the minds of men. Though all men are not equal in wisdom, yet half-wise only are all. A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. The fairest lives do those men live, whose wisdom wide has grown.
A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. For the wise man's heart is seldom happy, if wisdom too great he has won. A measure of wisdom each man shall have, but never too much let him know. Let no man the fate before him see, for so he is freest from sorrow. A brand from a brand is kindled and burned, and fire from fire begotten. And man by his speech is known to men, and the stupid by their stillness. He must early go forth who feign the blood, or the goods of another would get. The wolf that lies idle shall win little meat, or the sleeping man success. He must early go forth whose workers are few, himself his work to seek. Much remains undone for the morning sleeper, for the swift is wealth half won. Of seasoned shingles and strips of bark, for the thatch let one know his need, and how much of wood he must have for a month, or in half a year he will use. Washed and fed to the council fair, but care not too much for thy clothes. Let none be ashamed of his shoes and hose, less still of the steed he rides. When the eagle comes to the ancient sea, he snaps and hangs his head. So is a man in the midst of a throng, who few to speak for him finds. To question and answer must all be ready, who wish to be known as wise. Tell one thy thoughts, but beware of two, all know what is known to three. The man who is prudent, a measured use of the might he has will make, he finds when among the brave he fares that the boldest he may not be. A man must be watchful and wary as well, and fearful of trusting a friend. Oft for the words that to others one speaks, he will get but an evil gift. Too early too many a meeting I came, and some too late I have sought. The beer was all drunk, or not yet brewed, little the loath man finds. To their homes men would bid me hither and yon, if a mealtime I needed no meat, or would hang two hams in my true friend's house, where only one I had eaten. Fire for men is the fairest gift, and power to see the sun, health as well if a man may have it, and life not stained with sin. All wretched is no man, though never so sick, some from their sons have joy, some win it from kinsmen, and some from their wealth, and some from worthy works. It is better to live than to lie a corpse, the live man catches the cow, I saw flames rise for the rich man's pyre, and before his door he lay dead. The lame rides a horse, the handless is herdsman, the deaf in battle is bold, the blind man is better than one that is burned, no good can come of a corpse. A son is better, though late he be born, and his father to death have fared. Memory stones seldom stand by the road, save when kinsmen honour his king. To make a battle, the tongue slays the head, in each furry coat a fist I look for. He welcomes the knight whose fare is enough, full oft does the weather change in a week, and more in a month's time. A man knows not, if nothing he knows, that gold oft apes begets. One man is wealthy, and one is poor, yet scorn for him none should know. Among Fichung's sons saw I well-stocked folds, now bear they the beggar's staff. Wealth is as swift as a winking eye, of friends the falsest it is. Cattle die and kinsmen die, and so one dies oneself. But a noble name will never die, if good renown one gets. Cattle die and kinsmen die, and so one dies oneself. One thing I know that never dies, the fame of a dead man's deeds. Certain is that which is sought from the runes, that the gods so great have made and the master poet painted. Certain of that which is sought from the runes, the runes of the race of gods. Silence is safest and best. An unwise man, if a maiden's love or wealth he chances to win. His pride will wax, but his wisdom never. Straightforward he fares in conceit. So there we have the first part of the Harvamal stanzas 1 to 80, known as the Harvamal proper. 
coming from the Bellows translation from the Icelandic. I will continue to read further sections of the Harvamal in future episodes, interspersed with poetry, stories, discussions, news from around the world. So I'll speak to you soon. I hope you enjoyed the show. So, see you soon.